The following is a reading from the book, Wagner's Ring, Turning the Sky Round, an introduction to the Ring of the Nibelung, written by Father Owen Lee. Can you remember when you first felt the power of music? The scholar C.S. Lewis, who sometimes wrote stories for children, once looked back on his own childhood in a book he called Surprised by Joy, and he told there how he first awakened to Wagner. It was intuitive and instantaneous. I can lay my hand on the very moment, he said. There is hardly any fact I know so well. Lewis was a boy in an English schoolroom when he first saw Arthur Rackham's illustrations for Wagner's ring. The sky had turned round, he remembered. Pure northernness engulfed me, a vision of huge, clear spaces hanging above the Atlantic in the endless twilight. And almost at the same moment, I knew that I had met this before, long, long ago. There arose at once, almost like heartbreak, the memory of joy itself, the knowledge that I had once had, what I had now lacked for years, that I was returning at last from exile and desert lands to my own country. I stared round that dusty schoolroom like a man recovering from unconsciousness, and at once I knew, with fatal knowledge, that to have that sense, again, was the supreme and only important object of desire. To recapture that sense, young Lewis found and read, in rapture, a synopsis of the ring. And then he wrote a long schoolboy's poem on it, and finally he heard, in a crowded gramophone shop, his first excerpt from Wagner's ring, The Ride of the Valkyries. From that moment, he says, Wagnerian records became the chief drain on my pocket money and the presents I invariably asked for. Music was one thing, Wagnerian music quite another, and there was no common measure between them. It was a new kind of pleasure, if indeed pleasure is the right word, rather than trouble, ecstasy, astonishment, a conflict of sensations without name. I quote from C.S. Lewis, and at some length, because he describes an experience, an awakening, most of us who love Wagner have felt, and may have felt earlier than our teens. A sense that in discovering Wagner, we have discovered something no other music has. Something in ourselves we knew long before, but had forgotten. I also cite Lewis because he came to Wagner First, through an intuitive idea associated with land and sky and seascape, then through graphic illustrations, then through the story of the ring, and finally, and most overwhelmingly, through the music itself. He calls it all a conflict of sensations without name. But Wagner, who had a name for it, Gesamt Kunstwerk, the work of art that affects us at some deep personal level through a conflux of idea the plastic arts, poetry, and music, Wagner would say, yes, that is very much as I intended. And Wagner, who is said sometimes to turn us unhealthily inward, opened young Lewis outward to the world. I was always involuntarily looking, he says, for scenes that might belong to the Wagnerian world. Here, a steep hillside covered with firs where Mima might meet Sieglinde, there, a sunny glade where Siegfried might listen to the bird, or presently, a dry valley of rocks where the lithe, scaly body of Fafner might emerge from its cave. Years later, he recalled, it seemed to me that I had tasted heaven then. A final reason for citing Lewis? For him, Wagner was not limiting, but liberating. Wagner provided the young scholar with the insight, the memory, the visionary gleam of joy that eventually took him through the Great War and reading, quote, greats and teaching philosophy at Oxford to the sense of God that irradiates all his work. <laughs>